now that we've talked about the how, we'll move up the stack and cover the Android runtime execution environment. In this part of the lesson, you'll get a chance to understand the role of the execution environment in Android's runtime layer. And you'll also have a chance to understand the two execution environments that have been part of Android's runtime over time, including Art and Dalvik. Applications rarely access Art or Dalvik directly, but it's still useful to understand what they do in order to be a more effective full-stack developer. Let's start by giving an overview of Android's runtime execution environment. Android's runtime layer is largely used to execute Java apps on mobile devices, including tablets, phones, and various types of wearables. Moreover, it's also possible to use this runtime layer to implement apps in the Chrome browser on laptops and desktops, which is a relatively new addition to the Android runtime infrastructure. The Android runtime layer contains an execution environment that resides atop the Android Linux kernel. This allows the execution of application bytecode and or native code inside of a single Linux process. The code that runs here is generated typically from Java source files by the Java C compiler. Although, as we'll see later, increasingly, Android is also supporting the use of other languages, such as Kotlin. The environment, the Android runtime execution environment, that is, is created when a process starts and it's destroyed when the process exits. A process can run apps and or system services. The use of this architecture enhances portability and productivity by shielding higher layers of Android from the low-level details of the underlying hardware. Therefore, it's possible to take the apps that you write for Android and run them in many different hardware infrastructure environments, such as an emulator, the ARM instruction set, the Intel x86 instruction set, and so on, without requiring changes to the source code of the app. As we'll see later, this is a variant of the concept you find in Java of write once, run anywhere. The goal is not to run anywhere, but to be able to run in the context of the underlying hardware to which Android and the Android platform have been ported. Android apps typically run in their own process and their own instance of this execution environment. It's also possible for apps to share the same process, although that's not as common. Let's talk about the evolution of the Android's ex execution environment, which has changed a bit over the years. Android apps are typically written in Java, but they don't run and a standard Java Virtual Machine, or JVM. Originally, they used something called the Dalvik Virtual Machine, or the DVM, to interpret so-called Dalvik bytecode. Dalvik used what's called a register machine model. And in this model, there's basically a way of being able to have virtual instructions that are executed in software by the interpreter. In contrast, the Java platform and the JVM uses what's called a stack machine model, which is a slightly different way of implementing the execution and interpretation of bytecode. These two types of bytecode are not directly compatible. That is to say, you can't take code that's compiled by the Java compiler that runs in standard Java bytecode and run it directly in Dalvik using its bytecode model. Likewise, you can't take code that's written in Dalvik and run it directly on the Java Virtual Machine. Having said that, the two types of bytecode that are available are actually quite similar uh, in terms of the features that they implement, although the syntax and structure is somewhat different to account for differences between running largely in a mobile environment and running in a more classic laptop or desktop environment. There's a program called DX that's provided along with Dalvik as part of the tools package that transforms the Java bytecode that's generated by the Java C compiler, which resides in the so-called .class files, into DEX formatted bytecode, which run in the so-called .dex files. Later, after Android was released, several years after it was released, a just-in-time compiler was added that would take the bytecode at runtime 
and then be able to dex bytecode, that is, take the bytecode at runtime and then perform optimizations on it just in time to locate parts of the bytecode that was accessed frequently and then convert it into native code, which could then run much faster than having to be interpreted over and over again by the interpreter. The way this works, it's very, very common. Lots of uses of, of just-in-time compilers or JITs in interpreted language environments. It basically performs dynamic bytecode optimization while a program runs. More recently, and that's from around, I believe, Android M or so, so the last two or three years, Davic has largely been replaced by an improved runtime called ART, which stands for the Android runtime. And as we'll see, uh, Dalvik still exists and still can be used, but it's largely been deprecated and replaced by ART. Unlike the Dalvik, which is clearly interpreted with a JIT, ART uses what's called an ahead-of-time compiler. And this compiler takes the DEX files and converts them into native code when an application is downloaded in APK form and installed on a machine. So as a result, what comes out is something that can be run in a more efficient way by native execution on the underlying processor instruction set rather than having to be interpreted in software by a virtual machine. There have been some other enhancements and improvements that have been added to ART as well. There's better support for garbage collection, which requires fewer garbage collection pauses and also allows parallel execution by being able to do some of the garbage collection in a background thread that is able to be more uh, efficient and doesn't interrupt the flow of control of the application, especially on multi-core machines, multi-core devices. Believe it or not, there also is a JIT that's used to further optimize ART's ahead-of-time compiled code at runtime. So in a sense, you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. You're getting ahead-of-time compilation, which takes care of many poor uh, potential bottlenecks that would have existed in a pure interpreted model. And there's also a just-in-time compiler that can further optimize based on runtime properties. And if you take a look at the link at the bottom of the page, you'll learn more about the just-in-time compiler that comes bundled with ART. Irrespective of whether ART or Dalvik is used, Android's execution environments implement core Java concurrency and parallelism features that we've been focusing on throughout this course. For example, all the threading and synchronization mechanisms we've talked about as being part of Java are, of course, implemented with both ART or Dalvik. And this includes threads that are used to run computations concurrently. This includes built-in monitor objects with synchronization and notification mechanisms. And my website has lots more information that talk about the Java concurrency features that are available both in the Java platform as well as in the Android platform. It's interesting to note how Android's concurrency features involve capabilities and functionality that exist at many levels within the overall Android stack. Obviously, at the, the bottom level, we've got the actual hardware, which is the multi-core processors, and these are managed most directly and controlled most directly by a set of kernel threads that we've talked about when we discussed the Android Linux kernel. On top of these are the POSIX threads that provide a C API to program to the kernel threads in a standard way based on POSIX APIs for making threads and synchronizing them and so on. Atop that, there's a set of VM threads that Android provides, which do things that are more in the Android execution environment perspective. There's also the Java thread abstraction that lives on top of that. We've talked a bit about this, where you can create threads and start them, and you can uh, basically join with them when they finish. And then on top of that are a set of Android concurrency frameworks. There's also now support, of course, for multi-core hardware, and that's what's used increasingly on mobile devices in order to be able to speed up the processing. That's essentially the end of the discussion of Android's runtime execution environment. The key things to note here are that there are different execution environments that Android has used over time, starting with a more virtual machine-based approach, and as the hardware got uh, suitably powerful, and as there became more memory available, there was a movement away from an interpreted approach, which is typically very space-optimized, space, uh, but a little slower, to an approach that's more ahead-of-time compiled with art, where you have 
code that's going to be bigger, but it's able to run faster because it uses ahead-of-time compilation techniques.